Hi everyone, welcome to Simplicity TV. I am Jen Pike, your host. All right, this is week two, phase two of your menstrual cycle talk. So today is all about ovulation. Now I know a lot of women, I know this to be true because the conversations I have with my girlfriends, the conversations that I have with the women in my programs, that so many believe they only need to be concerned about ovulating if and when they are trying to get pregnant or not trying to get pregnant. And that is simply not true. Ovulation, yes, this is how we have the ability to actually conceive and get pregnant, but it is so much more than that. Whether or not you ovulate is going to predicate the balance of your progesterone and estrogen throughout the rest of your month. This is also going to be impactful on whether or not you're gonna have an early cycle, a late cycle, and it will impact things like your mood, your cravings, it'll also impact things like your blood sugar. When we're talking about this whole balance of estrogen and progesterone, without ovulation, you are not going to produce progesterone. And this is a big deal. This is why a lot of women are suffering from an estrogen imbalance or an estrogen um, dominant situation where there's too much estrogen in relationship to that progesterone. We've done a lot of talk here on the show and on the podcast about it. And so the thing is this, when you're in that first phase that we talked about last week and your body's producing your follicular stimulating hormone from your pituitary gland in your brain, your ovaries then are responding by the follicles getting ripened and an egg being chosen and an egg being released. Once that egg releases, what is left over behind the scenes, that corpus luteum, that is what your body uses to break down and then produce progesterone out of. Now, progesterone is what is going to be more elevated and higher in the second half of our cycle. It also has a very warming factor to it. It's why if you've ever done a predictor kit for ovulation or for fertility and you've done your basal temperature and you'll see that there's this slow rise in your body temperature and then there's a peak and then you'll see that there is a decline on the other side. That peak is really indicating when ovulation has happened, when that progesterone surge is happening and then there's going to be a leveling off and then a slow steady decline until you actually get your menstrual cycle. So if we don't ovulate, you'll notice you don't have that increase in body temperature. Without that progesterone, we don't have that hormone in our system that is helping to reduce anxiety, that is helping to keep your mood stable, that is helping to keep so many other things in balance. And so what are some of the things that might prevent this? Well, having an unhealthy level of estrogen in your system, not properly eliminating the estrogen, a lot of chemical products coming into your system, whether it is the food that you're eating, products, makeup, body care, feminine products that you're using that could be impeding that. You might have some gut issues that are going on, right? A, a dysbiosis, an overgrowth of certain bacteria like beta-glucuronidase, you could have H. pylori, you may have like an old stealth infection. Maybe you had chronic strep when you were growing up or you had mono at some point or you always got bronchitis, you were given lots of antibiotics. Perhaps you were on the birth control pill for a long period of time, which shuts down your ovulation 100% and your body got out of that rhythm. I see this happen all the time with young girls. They get their period in the first one to two years, it's heavier, it's irregular, they have acne, and the doctor recommends for them to go on the pill, telling moms it will regulate their cycle. It doesn't regulate it. It strips their body of the ability to actually ovulate and release that egg. And then what ends up happening is that their body is so out of whack. They don't have this internal rhythm of what's going on. Their sex hormone binding globulin becomes elevated and this can show up in terms of symptoms and side effects decades after they come off the birth control pill. So it's not actually fixing anything. The bleed they get every month is not a period. So listen to that part again. The bleed that a woman or a girl gets on her pill is not a period. It's called a chemical withdrawal bleed. And it is only when they go on their sugar pills or they stop taking the pill that the bleed happens. So think about this for a moment. If you're sitting there being like, this is, this is BS, like this, is, this can't even be true what she's saying. I want you to think about this. When you don't wanna get your period when you're on the birth control pill, you have a holiday coming up, a big event, your wedding, what do you do? You continue to take your pill. 
you don't stop for the seven days, you don't take the sugar pill. And why do you do that? Because you know if you keep taking the pill, your period is not going to happen. That's not your period. It means your bleed is not gonna happen. But that bleed, when it happens, is because you stop taking the pill, your body starts to go through a withdrawal of the chemical form of estrogen and progestin, which progestin is nothing like your own progesterone and that's what brings the bleed on. So depression is really high. There, a very good colleague of mine, Dr. Jolene Brighton, has an entire book called Beyond the Pill that I would highly recommend that you read or download to listen to um, and that you share this information with your daughters as well because it is you know, hundreds of pages of very in-depth information and an entire healing protocol. And I don't wanna eat up all our time around ovulation talking about this, but I wouldn't be doing this topic just if I did not make sure to include that for you. Now, the other thing is if you have an IUD. So a copper IUD does not have any um, synthetic hormones, but copper can displace iodine, zinc, um, our B vitamins, trace minerals, and impact the thyroid. The thyroid is greatly related to our ovulation and how healthy our ovulation as well. And did you know that you can have a period every month, a regular period, but possibly still not be ovulating? This is why paying attention to your cervical mucus. When you're coming into ovulation, it's gonna go from that creamy type of fluid into more of like a, a stickier, clear egg white consistency. You have to start to take note of these symptoms because they're really your inner voice. They're like your, your inner teacher that's trying to get you to understand from that hormonal perspective in each of these phases. They're giving you the cue of now how do you have to shift things? What do you need to do to support your ovulation? Are you eating well? Are you seed cycling? Are you getting sleep? You're also gonna notice that maybe your body odor changes around this time of the month. Um, our pheromones, the hormones that give off certain scents, they're trying to attract a mate around that time of ovulation because even though you might think to yourself, I don't wanna have children or I'm done that phase of my life, your body has not really got the message. Your body every month is still going to get into that primal, very attractive state. You'll probably notice you maybe do a little bit more in terms of like pulling yourself together around that time of month. You we learned last week when we were talking about that follicular phase, how your confidence is high, your energy is high. It gets amplified coming into ovulation because you wanna have all that energy that you can actually be intimate. You wanna be calling in the right type of partner. And what's really cool is that that cervical fluid I'm talking about it actually has channels in it. And your body like hand picks the good sperm and gets rid of the not so good sperm that it's gonna draw into your system. And again, whether or not you're trying to get pregnant, this process is gonna be happening and evolving. The healthier your system is, the higher quality ovulation you have, the better your body will be at selecting and bringing in um, you know, that good quality sperm. Now your body odor might change, which means that if you're using a natural deodorant, which I hope that you're all doing at this point, you'll probably find you have to change that deodorant up a couple of times throughout the month, and that's because no two days as a woman are the same. Now, once you go through ovulation, you'll find that your sex drive probably drops off a little bit, um, and we're gonna get into talking about this more in that luteal phase, which will be next week's uh, a topic, but this time of month, sex drive is high. And this is when you wanna be supporting with things like adding maca into your elixirs, you know, using essential oils. Um, and it would be things like clary sage, bergamot, sandalwood, cedarwood, those types of things. Ylang Ylang, those are fantastic for helping with libido and sex drive, but also just as a female to get you hormonally vibrating cognitively in that same level. Now, when I talked about exercise, still a good time for a higher intensity periods. Just pay attention to your recovery. If you get cramping during ovulation, you have that bit of a twinge, that pain, castor oil or um, the breast oil I've talked about before from St. Francis is great to use on the breast tissue and also around the area of the uterus and the ovaries. And if you get spotting around ovulation, please note this and pay attention because it might mean that you're not ovulating or that we have lower levels of progesterone than what the body actually requires. And these are all things to take back to your holistic healthcare practitioner or your functional medicine doctor, your naturopath. I'm gonna be honest with you, you're probably not gonna get very far on these subjects or topics with your medical doctor. It's just not, they're not trained a lot in this. It's not that they're not good at what they do. It's just this scope of practice as in depth as we're talking about this, it's just, it's not gonna be there. Um, so make sure you're aligning yourself with appropriate care. And if you're not, don't get mad at your doctor. It's not their fault. They just weren't trained in it. Find the right people who are gonna be able to help you and give you the right information. 
that's the type of information that you got for today. That's it for this segment. We are gonna finish off here. And then next week when we come back, you're gonna learn about the longest part of your cycle that actually leads into your menstrual cycle. So from my couch to yours, wishing you more simplicity and more ease. Happy ovulating days, ladies. I'll see you next week.